So, let us start from the point from where we left in the last class. So, far as I remember, we are discussing on the stopping mechanism in ion implantation system. So, we told you that uh, there are two types of stopping mechanism, one is known as nuclear stopping and the other one is electronic stopping. Now, today's class I will discuss on the theory of ion implantation. There are two theories, one is known as LSS theory of ion implantation and other is known as Pearson Ford distribution. Pearson Ford is more accurate compared to LSS theory. Let us first discuss on LSS theory. LSS are names of three scientists, Linhardt, Sarf and Seward. They combinedly developed this theory. This theory is based on this nuclear stopping and ion stopping mechanism and the loss of energy of the incident ion is given by d dx obviously it will be minus because energy is reducing loss of energy that minus d dx is equal to n into s n plus s e where s n is nuclear stopping power and s e is electronic stopping power. n is the number of surface atom per unit volume. If you consider the implantation of impurity atom in silicon, then number of silicon atoms per unit volume is the n. Now, S n which is nuclear stopping mechanism, this S n is independent of the incident ion energy, but it depends on atomic number and masses of the ion and target atom. For example, if you implant boron on silicon, then this nuclear stopping mechanism is dependent on the atomic mass and atomic mass and atomic number of boron atom and silicon atom, not how much energy the boron atom is incident on the silicon wafer. On the other hand, the electronic stopping mechanism SE is dependent on the dependent on the uh, energy of implantation as well as it is also dependent on the atomic mass numbers of the target and Im, uh, implanted uh, impurity atom. Okay? Now, uh, according to this LSS theory, the distribution is Gaussian, it is a rather simplified assumption and that distribution is given by Nx, Nx is the concentration of dopants at any distance x from the vertical, from the surface, vertical distance x from the surface that is n x that is equal to n naught exponential minus 0 0.5 x minus r p slash sigma p square, where the r p is given by projected, r p is nothing but projected range we discussed in earlier class and sigma p is known as standard deviation or straggle and that is also shown in the diagram you see the semiconductor surface is here ion beam is coming from this side it is in incident on the semiconductor surface then it will follow uh, several collisions just after entering into the crystal structure then it will follow a zigzag path and ultimately it will come to a rest because of nuclear and electronic stopping mechanism and the average path traveled by this ion is known as R which is range and RP is the projection of is R is known as RP which is projected range. And straggle or standard deviation is the, the uh, uh, basically the deviation of the length at which deviation of the length from the incident direction at which the ions 
will stop. So that is the straggle or standard deviation. So that means the iron may stop over a over a statistical distribution over a over an average path, it may be here or it may be here or at the center. So that is basically the delta RP, which is also known as the straggle or standard deviation. Now, if we look uh, into the distribution, then as this LSS theory suggested that the approximate distribution is Gaussian, then a perfect Gaussian profile looks like this. This is the RP line that is projected range line. And uh, the, the deviation from the projected range of the stopping point is the del, uh, sigma p and sigma lateral is shown here. So if you see the 3D view, that means here is a 2D view, that means x and x and z direction that is there. So its distribution is like this. And if you take 3D, then the sigma lateral also will come into the picture. So it is shown like this. And in RP, that means at the projected range RP, the concentration is in RP, and 0.6 in RP is at this particular point. So different uh, isoconcentric lines are shown here. Okay, so iron beam is incident here, in this along the x direction, and the Gaussian distribution is like this is true Gaussian. But the problem is the true Gaussian profile does not match with the experimental profile obtained in iron implantation. In some of the cases it matches, in some of the cases it doesn't match. Particularly at the point of RP, that means projected range point, it perfectly matches. But uh, uh, distant from the RP value, that means tail region. This region is known as the tail region and this side is also known as the tail region. These two tail regions doesn't match with experimental results. So this ideal Gaussian profile, that's why does not shoot the experimental impurity, the, uh, uh, pro, impurity profile in semiconductors. The deviations are, are seen just uh, in the tail region. That means where at the surface and in the uh, away from the RP value. So that means away from the projected range that means deeper into the substrate, these two regions, this uh, LSS uh, theory of perfect Gaussian profile does not valid. And these tail regions are explained by another technique that is known as the four moment approach, uh, approach that is Pearson four distribution. So before that, let us give you an expression for the implantation dose. So implantation dose phi is the number of ions implanted per unit surface area. And that is given by the nx dx integral 0 to infinity. This is infinity, not alpha, mind it. So 0 to infinity integral nx dx is equal to uh, under root 2 pi sigma p n naught. n naught is the concentration at the surface. And sigma p is the straggle or standard deviation. And from this expression, the n naught is given by n naught is given by phi y from this equation, n naught is given by phi y under root 2 pi sigma p or this equal to 0 0.4 phi slash sigma p. Now, if you put this value of n naught into the earlier equation of nx, then it is it is uh, uh, given by nx equal to phi y under root 2 pi sigma p exponential minus 0 0.5 x minus rp y sigma p square whole square. So that is the complete distribution of the LSS uh, theory. And then uh, uh, this is uh, uh, nature if you plot it is, is, is similar to Gaussian. But here the it is depend you see in this expression it is dependent on two parameter one is the RP and sigma P, projected range and the straggle, these are two important parameters. So now, as just now I mentioned that only the projected range and sigma P means straggle, although these two are very important parameter in deciding the profile, but they are not sufficient. So uh, another two parameters 
have been considered in the modified model and that modified model is known as Pearson 4 distribution. And now let us see the Pearson 4 distribution. It is based on four moments and sometimes it is also known as four moment method. And this four moment method uh, in, the, in, the, in the Pearson 4 distribution, you will see uh, these moments are sigma uh, rp, delta rp, this, uh, this is gamma and beta, skewness and kurtosis. So in addition to projected range and straggle, we find another two parameter and those two parameter are skewness and kurtosis. And skewness and kurtosis are defined by this uh, uh, integral, you can see here, the <coughs> This is a more exact model for ion implanted, ion implanted impurity distribution and it uses four moments and these four moments are given by m i is equal to 1 by phi integral minus infinity to plus infinity x minus r p to the power i n x d x and the sigma p is given by under root m 2 by phi. Okay? Now, this rp is a projected range. Uh, when i equal to 1, then you will get the rp value because the, the i equal to 1, this is m1. m1 is, is a out of four moments, the first moment is m1 and that is, is known as rp or projected range. If you put i equal to 2, then i equal to 2, you put this equation, then it will be m2 and there is a second moment and the second moment is known by straggle, delta rp. Okay? So, delta rp uh, can be given by this equation just by putting i equal to 2. Then skewness is a, is a gamma and that is normalized skewness sometimes is given by 1 by delta rp q and that is given by if you put i equal to 3 in this equation, you will get the expression of skewness. And the fourth one, fourth moment is kurtosis beta and if you put i equal to 4 in this equation, you will get the uh, relation of the kurtosis or fourth moment. So now, uh, here the beta or kurtosis describes the tail character of the distribution. As I told you, the tail regions are not matched with the LSS theory of distribution. So to match this, the tail regions, two other parameters are introduced here. One is known as skewness and other is known as kurtosis. And particularly the kurtosis uh, uh, is a parameter which can match the tail character of the uh, impurity distribution. Okay? Now, uh, this, uh, in this case, for the analytical convenience, the implant distribution is sometimes described by double-sided Gaussian function. That is for uh, your simplification or analytical distribution. Now here, uh, see the profile and in this profile full Gaussian measured and four moment method, all the three methods are uh, the curves are shown. So now the solid line is the four moment method, solid line curves and dotted lines are measured values, sorry do, uh, dots are measured and dotted line is Gaussian dotted line is full Gaussian and this curve is for boron implantation in silicon for different energies and energy varies from 30 keV to 800 keV. Curves are for 30 keV, 100 keV, 300 and 800. As the energy increases, so depth will also increase, delta Rp will increase, delta Rp basically gives you the idea of the depth of concentration, uh, depth of implantation and here if you look into the four curves then you can see that uh, if, if energy increases the implantation depth also increases and at the same time uh, the experimental values which are dots in this curve perfectly matches with the four moment curve which are solid lines in all the curves you can see here. And the dotted lines are Gaussian, that is from LSS theory, and that is not perfectly matched with the measured values. 
Now another point is also to be observed is the implantation is, is not very high energy implantation. That means if the implantation energy is within say 20 or 30 or 40 or 60 kV in that range, the profile closely matches with the Gaussian one. You see, the in this 30 kV, all the three curves that means uh, experimental points, solid curve and dotted curve almost matches. But the second one, 100 kV, you see the surface tail region. Surface tail, this is known as surface tail region and is a deep tail region at higher depth. So, surface tail region does not match. This is the profile of the Gaussian distribution and that is the, the points and solid curves are uh, measured and for moment. And now if you increase 100 to 300, you see the deviation is much. 300 to 800 deviation is extremely high. So that means the, the approximate distribution of Gaussian pro, uh, distribution profile may, uh, may be used for normal implantations up to range of say 30, 40 or 60 kV. That means low, I should not say very low energy implantation, medium energy implantation which is 30 or 40 or 60 kV, that is the normal range in VLSI fabrication. Normal VLSI fabrication require energy in the range of 30 to 60 kV. So in that range, for an approximate approximation, we can sometimes use the Gaussian distribution profile. But more accurate is obviously Pearson 4 distribution which is four moment method, clear? So now, uh, here in this curve also you can see sigma p1, x is 0 to rp sigma p1 and x is greater than rp sigma p2 because you see in the, in the, in the higher energies, higher energies means x is 0 to rp, x equal to 0 is here, rp is the middle, this point is, this point is rp. For example, for 300 kV, rp is near 0.8 micron. So that means for that, some some sort of nature which is different from the the values which is greater than rp greater than rp is 0 0.8 above that means deeper into the silicon is a x is greater than rp that means you can divide the distribution profile in the two region one is x equal to 0 to rp other is x is greater than rp x is greater than rp in case of boron in silicon obviously it matches with the gaussian profile but when x is 0 to rp in that range it does not match. And if you look into the arsenic profile, the, the thing is different. So there we will see that the, this tail means surface tail matches, but in the deeper into the, into the substrate, that means other, that means X is greater than RP, that side in case of arsenic does not match with the Gaussian distribution profile. But there also it has been observed in case of arsenic that Pearson 4 distribution, it matches. That means only the problem is the tail region, either surface tail or uh, deep uh, into the substrate tail, deep tail. So both tails are giving some problem in Gaussian distribution, which is an approximate distribution profile and given by LSS. But both arsenic and boron tails exactly uh, matches with the with the Pearson four or four moment approach. Now. Uh, next one we will discuss on implantation through mask. In case of implantation, the mask material normally we use silicon dioxide or silicon nitride like dielectric material, but sometimes photoresist masking is also used. In some cases, if, we, if the implantation energy is not that high, you can use photoresist as a mask material. And this mask, uh, implantation through mask that means here window is open then you are implanting so there although it has been it has been told earlier that the implantation technique will have no lateral spread that is only in case of diffusion even then because of the mask pattern it has been observed that small spread, lateral spread is also there in case of implantation and that means profile is not exactly vertical but some spread in lateral direction has been observed. And that is for finite thickness of the mask, 
it has been thin because the mask edge is not exactly vertical, some tapered line is there. So, because of the tapering, so because the window you have you have opened by etching technique. So, that means in this side and this side, if thickness is more, mass thickness, so tapering over a, over a longer distance will be there. That means this edge, it will taper like this and this edge will be taper like this. So, because of different thickness, so some of the ions will come into the, uh, into the silicon material and here also some of the ions will penetrate into silicon and it will also diffuse. Now, if you see the concentration along this direction, x direction, so here we see from this point to this point is a constant and after that it is changing, gradually it is changing and it extends up to this point. So that means uh, the y along y direction the profile f y is plotted here, 1 means what is the, uh, this is normalized value basically, that is n, uh, the, this is n, n by n naught, n x by n naught that value will be 1 at this particular point, but gradually if you see the uh, mask age, so it gradually reduces. So now in the bottom figure, you can see the iso isoconcentric lines. That means here you see 10 to the power minus 4 is uh, the, 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 the x direction is this one and x is this one and y direction is this one, okay. Vertical we got take it as x and here you see in the lateral sphere if you see that 10 to the minus 4 is very low here, okay, and that is again in the, here it is very low, here it is very low. Similarly, 0.5 you can get from this is the ring, you can get isoconcentric 0.5 means oh, what is that? N by N naught. So that value is 0.5 here and 0.5 here, and because it is a full Gaussian type of thing. So it is not like diffusion, but you get half Gaussian. Half Gaussian means what? At the surface, peak concentration. At the surface you get peak, but here it is not full Gaussian. Full Gaussian means your the peak concentration will be at the value of Rp in the projected range value, not at the surface. So just think diffusion in the surface concentration is more than gradually reduces, but ion implant is not like that. Okay, you are implanting and the projected range Rp site will be the maximum concentration. Okay. So now these are the isoconcentric line and two dimensional profile is like this. So now uh, this is uh, the implantation uh, through mask. Now uh, one phenomena I will discuss which is very important in ion implantation that is known as a channeling, channeling phenomena. So channeling, when you can see the channeling? That means here the ions will channel through a passage without lot of scattering, without much scattering. When a highly collimated ion beam is incident normally on crystalline silicon wafer with a standard orientation such as 100 or 111, most of the incident ions find lot of open space between crystal planes and also open channels that can penetrate to much larger depths. This is known as channeling and its distribution is sensitive to the directionality of the ion beam and substrate orientation. It is avoided in most applications of ion implantation. Why it is avoided? Because it will give you unpredicted result of the penetration, implant, penetration depth. Because if channeling is prominent, then without stopping the ions inside the crystal, it traverses a longer distance. And, and then for a particular energy, the proper estimation of the junction depth or proper estimation of the RP value is not possible if channeling is predominantly there. Since it is undesired phenomena, we have to have certain mechanism so that 
channeling can be reduced to a to a very small value and those we will discuss one by one and channeling basically is the undesirable as I told you and why it is undesirable because it is uncontrolled and in channeling since scattering is less collisions is less is stopping mechanism is not exactly exactly estimated by the implantation theory. So, in silicon we have, it has been observed that widest channels exist along 110 direction and narrowest along 111 direction. This has been observed in case of silicon. Widest channels exist along 110 direction and narrowest along 111 direction. That means along 110 direction if the ion beam incident normal to the surface then through the crystal plane more and more ions will travel over a larger distance before it stops. Okay. And now uh, we will see the channeling phenomena how how it looks like. So, now here you can see the diagram A. So, these are the lattice points this is a silicon crystal is a diamond structure and is arranged in the lattice and these are the points silicon host point. So, now each the each this line is a is a plane crystal plane. Now, here you can see there are three beams ion beams is shown A, B and C and the A beam is incident normal almost normal to the surface like this. So, it, it travel without mass scattering between this plane and this plane and it will travel through a distance without stopping up to this. Now, channel now the ion beam B you see here B after scattering here this point it is scattering then it takes a path like this and it follows a path here also in the in the in the in angular direction it also faces a channel so that this particular B travel along this path without much scattering or without much collision. So, initially it strikes here after that it, it gets a finds a channel like this. Similarly, C, C is scattering at this point, again is scattering from that point and it hits here. So, after that maybe here it gets some channel. So, before it faces a channel, lot of scattering or collision takes place. So, there almost is energy has been reduced much and it cannot proceed further. But A ion, it, its energy is not reduced because it does not face more collision and this particular ion can travel to a longer distance into the silicon crystal. So, here A will channel more compared to C and it is not always true that the channel it will face just at the at the implant at the impact at the surface. After maybe one or two collision or scatter it may find a channel through which it can travel without obstruction and without any opposition or scattering. So, these are these are the channeling phenomena and this is the uh, profile actually backscattered yield around a channel direction is shown in this particular diagram backscattered yield. So, sometimes it is scattered and it will come back to original position it may be deviate its forward direction and it follow different path. Now, in the diagram C the effect of channeling is shown and here the depth versus concentration log concentration is plotted and because of the channeling we found that the tail region deviates from the Gaussian profile. And in earlier case where uh, I discussed the distribution or theory of ion implantation there I told you that that the tail region does not match with the Gaussian. Why it does not match? The that mismatch one of the reason for that mismatch is the 
channeling effect, the channeling tail and it, this channeling tail uh, is observed in either in boron or in arsenic or in antimony, any of the impurity profile we can see because of the channeling effect, uh, the tail region is extended beyond the Gaussian, this is the Gaussian and this is the channel. Because the Gaussian distribution theory, LSS theory, they always, uh, that theory is based on the assumption that lot of collision will take place. But in practical reality is not the same, some channeling will be there, okay. And that channeling can be approximated by this, uh, the third and fourth moment that is uh, the kurtosis and qness using these two values. Now, uh, that is the modification of the uh, four moment approach there. Channeling effect is also considered to some extent. Now, this undesired phenomena of channeling, how to reduce it? Because it is unde undesired effect and it is uncontrolled way the impurity atoms will move into the crystal. So, that has to be stopped. And for that, certain techniques are used, and those techniques I will discuss one by one. Before that, let us see uh, that uh, the, the channeling can be stopped by, by a tilt angle implantation. And what is the tilt angle? The channeling, when I explained in the earlier slide, I told, let us assume the, uh, the ions are, are incident normal to the surface. But if it is not incident normal to the surface, it, it uh, hits the surface at a particular angle, then the probability of channeling is less. And that angle is known as a critical angle. And the ions incident at an angle less than the critical angle, less than, by it, less than the critical angle, psi critical will channel. If the angle is less than the critical angle, then it will channel. But the incidence angle is more than the critical angle, then it will not channel. And the critical angle, psi critical is given by the relation twice Z1, Z2 Q square by ED under root, where Z1 and Z2 are the atomic numbers of target atoms and incident ion. Target atom means impurity atom and sorry, target atom means it is silicon substrate and incident ion means impurity ions either is a boron, arsenic or antimony, etc. Okay. E is known as the beam energy and D is the lattice spacing along the aligned row. Lattice spacing is a D. Q is the electronic charge. And it has been seen that if the energy of implantation is less than 200 keV, in that case the psi critical, which is critical angle, is in the range of 3 degree to 5 degree, that is the psi, psi critical, okay, that is less than 3 to 5 degree. Now, uh, here two diagrams are shown. 1, 0, 0 direction and in the random direction. Just in the previous slide, I told you the channeling is most favored in 1, 1, 0 direction. Now, you see if the incident ion is normal to this surface, that means this direction 1, 1, 0 crystal, then you see lot of the open channels are there, space. And if the, the ions, the impurity ions, does not, if it incident just normal to any of this hollow region, then easily it can channel through that particular hollow region without lot of collision or scattering, okay. But a random direction means if you, if the ions are, are, are uh, implanted at an angle which is not normal to the surface, then those ions will see the lattice points in a random direction. So, if it is a random direction, then it will, there is a chance of more collision or scattering 
and then the theory of implantation that means the stopping mechanism by nuclear collision or stopping mechanism by electronic collision is valid. Okay. So, these are the view of the diamond structure along a major crystal axis 110 and along a random direction. Okay. Now, uh, in this view graph, again the channeling is seen for different cases, one is oblique incidence and another is perfectly aligned. So, that means perfectly aligned means in this particular case, if it is a normal to the surface, here again A, B, C, you see. So, if it is a normal to the surface, then the paths are like this, but oblique incidence here A, B, C, the three directions is, is shown. So, now here in the uh, incidence direction C, you see is a very, this is a normal direction, C angle is less than the critical angle. See the, 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 with the, the dotted line, the angle of C ion is less, very small. And so you can see that C without, uh, this, this is the path of the C. And these are the crystal planes, 1, 2, 3, 4. And all the silicon crystals are lying in this plane, different plane lattice that is points are there. So, now the, the in the direction of C, if a ion enters into the crystal, then it follows this path, it follows this path and that is that path mode channeling will occur. But the direction of A you see, so it is here obviously the it is more than the critical angle, is a large angle. So, there you, you see just after entering the crystal, it colloids here and after that it may colloid in this direction here, another silicon then comes here, maybe here like that, lot of collision will take place. Okay. This is shown how the below critical angle and above critical angle, the channels are either favorable or not favorable. Now, in the next card shows the critical dose at which amorphism begins for common impurities in silicon. And those common impurities are here, the boron, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony and bismuth. So, boron, phosphorus, antimony and, and arsenic, these are the common thing and they with temperature versus critical dose of amorphization. That means, if you implant uh, several impurity atoms in silicon, then depending on the dose, the amorphization would take place at different temperature. At different temperature, the a specific dose will create amorphization layer. Otherwise, it will not create amorphization of the surface layer. Okay. If you increase the temperature from 400 to 800, so now you can see that high temperature, the requirement of dose for amorphization is more, those requirements are more compared to the implantation at low temperature. Okay. Now, amorphous distribution. If the ions are incident obliquely at an angle more than psi critical for channeling they see arbitrary and irregular distribution of the substrate atom. That is shown in the diagram also. If the incident ions are away, deviate from the normal incident direction, then they see arbitrary and ir irregular distribution of the substrate atom. There will therefore be a stronger interaction which will result in smaller depth of penetration. This is known as amorphous distribution range and is normally preferred. And all implantation process produces amorphous layer and amorphous distribution range is normally preferred. Okay. And ions incident at angles more than psi critical see the crystal target as random or amorphous. When the 
incident angle at the surface is more than psi critical, then those impurity atoms see the crystalline target as random or amorphous. And then penetration is shallower. Obviously, when it is amorphous, then through amorphous layer, the ions cannot penetrate into deeper, deeper into the silicon. Because why? Because in amorphous layer, the crystals are oriented, crystal, crystal atoms or lattices are oriented in a random fashion. There is no regular regular structure of that particular material. Because of the irregularity, the uh, and the randomness uh, in the position of the atoms, so then uh, the lot of uh, in, during implantation, the channeling will be prevented drastically, okay. Because regular shape you are disturbing and then penetration will be shallower. Amorphous distribution is well defined shallower and thinner, okay. So, well defined shallower and thinner. Thus, amorphous distribution is achieved by implantation into slightly tilted wafer. Amorphous distribution achieved means you have to reduce channeling drastically, then it will be amorphous distribution. And implantation into slightly tilted wafer and that tilting angle is nearly 5 degree. Another technique is the implantation through an amorphous oxide, oxide layer and the third one is implantation through a thin surface layer of the substrate pre-amorphized pre by heavy ion implantation. And imp the f that these are the three techniques by which you can reduce channeling effect and at the same time you can get amorphous layer. First is the angle as I uh, mentioned the critical angle and if you if the implantation, if the incidence angle is more than critical angle, then uh, the amorphous distribution will take place. And the second technique is through oxide. Oxide is not a single crystal material, it is the amorphous material. So, since it is amorphous already, so if you uh, implant through oxide, so le uh, channeling probability is less, thin oxide. And the third technique is implantation through thin surface layer of the substrate pre-amorphosized pre by heavy ion implantation. That means, before actual impurity implantation, what is done there? Initially, some heavy ion implantation is done, high dose, maybe low energy, that is the say heavy ion means argon. Argon is one such material. So, by implantation of argon, you just amorphize the layer thin layer, surface layer of the silicon. After then, after that you implant impurity atom. In that case, the impurity atom initially face a thin amorphous, amorphous layer and channeling will be drastically reduced and that is the technique sometimes used. And not only argon, in sometimes arsenic is also heavy. That means, this channeling phenomena is more in case of light means boron atom compared to arsenic. Arsenic is a heavier atom, Z is more compared to the boron. The atomic number of arsenic is nearly 70, 71 I think, and but in case of boron it is only 11. So, in case of arsenic, we see the during implantation more amorphism takes place, but boron is a is a light material that much amorphization does not take place in case of boron. So, amorph amorphization is necessary and sometimes other than implantation techniques, the amorphization, amor amorphization we use for other application of VLSI 
that is a silicide formation and the silicide formation uh, we will discuss uh, in, 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 in this uh, uh, metallization class how silicide is form, formed by heavy energy implantation then annealing something like that. So now the damages and amorphization some points is also mentioned here. So a surface will be damaged when heavier ions cause heavier ions in case of heavier ion implantation that means heavier ions cause more damages. Ion energy E is greater than E D then the amorphization is favored and this E D is displacement energy it is 4 times E B, E B is the bonding energy. This E D value for silicon is 14 electron volt, E D value for silicon is 14 electron volt and the critical dose for amorphization is given by phi C equal to F N E D R P by delta E naught. In this expression N is the target atom density. In case of silicon the atom density is 4.88 10 to the power 22 per cc. Delta E naught is energy deposited per ion that is delta E naught and F is a factor constant factor which varies from 0.1 to 0.5 for silicon. In this expression the E D is basically 14 electron volt for silicon is a bonding energy that is, uh, is a 4 times bonding energy is the E D which is known as the displacement energy. F is a constant N is the silicon if it is a silicon target then silicon density is 4.88 10 to the 22 R P is the projected range thereby delta E naught the energy deposited per ion. This is a critical dose for amorphization. You can calculate from these values. Okay. So uh, these are the, the channeling and amorphization phenomena in, in ion implantation. So next class I will discuss on the ion implantation machine. Let me stop here now.